Glastonbury Festival is the largest greenfield music and performing arts festival in the world and it's an event that EE puts an awful lot of resources into providing the optimum network experience to due to a typical attendance of over 100,000 people. So in this video today I'm going to show what the masks deployed at this year's Glastonbury Festival look like and how they work. Now the centrepiece for these temporary sites or cells and wheels aka cows is a six beam CCI antenna. This fires out six beams of signal therefore allowing for six times the I guess capacity assuming optimum signal conditions compared to a single beam antenna that you'd typically find on each side of a normal site. Now each beam on this antenna has L18, L26, so it's going to have minimum of 55 megahertz of LTE spectrum, 20 megahertz band 3 and then 35 megahertz band 7, although they might augment the band 3 LTE carrier up to 30 megahertz bringing the total LTE spectrum to around about 65 megahertz but that will depend on the amount of faulty traffic hitting the site and therefore if there's a lot of faulty traffic there's likely to be very little 2G traffic therefore you can shift more of the 2G spectrum over to 4G and therefore do 30 megahertz on the band 3 LTE carrier. There is also U21 to so 3G2100 for carrying the 3G circuit switch voice as well as data for basic smartphones. The way that these frequencies are fed into the antenna antennas is via diplexers. So the 1800 MHz 2G 4G and the 3G 2100 MHz are fed into a diplexer and then that then goes into a diplexer where 2600 MHz is also added. So there's two diplexes basically to combine the 1800, 2100 and 2600. Not completely sure why they didn't use a triplexer, but unless the radio design diplexes have used are well known in the industry. The BTS equipment in the cabin is very much a standard affair for an e-deployment site. So there's the Huawei BTS 3900 stack is for the 2G and 4G 1800 megahertz as well as providing the 4G 2600 MHz via the RIU feed. 3G is via the normal NSN WCDMA flexi stack that you would find once again on a standard EE site. In total there will be five temporary sites like this on the Glastonbury site alongside a permanent EE site as well. Although these masts are not all that visible because they're not located like I say straight straight in the centre like where the people are, they're kind of on the edges generally and also as you see in this example they've gone to some effort to camouflage the antenna. So all in all having six masts deployed roughly like this will provide a colossal amount of capacity which is required for the terabytes of data that these sites will likely carry over the Glastonbury festival period. So um, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the festival if you're going to it. I have produced uh, another video just a bit before this one about these temporary sites covering other designs they use for serving festivals and events which may be of interest if this one is.